I said something that I didn't think was funny, but it was funny, and I got this this laughter from the congregation. And I can understand how you would feel and how every actor on Broadway and performing on stage feels because it's it's just like a a tidal wave that rushes over you, that that wonderful feeling. Does it feel that way for you, too, or what does it feel like for you? Can you describe it? That's exactly, that's a great description, Jay. It is. You know, and the thing about it is it's a human condition. It's a human feeling for the majority of the population. There are, there's always caveats to everything, but the majority of the population likes to be touched, likes to be hugged, likes mm-hmm. to be complimented, likes to be liked. That is, those are just human conditions. And what, unfortunately, what happens in show business, we're all so used to, to honing that and wanting that and maintaining that, we get reputations for being whatever or full of ourselves or whatever. But you have to know your worth in show business, and there's a certain amount of putting yourself out there to be in this business. And the way our society is, it's no different than anything else in our society that we're either for or against. It's what it is, and you have to learn to maneuver your way through it. And in our society, we idolize celebrities. We idolize people that we see all the time in a medium that is not immediately available to us, i.e. the television So when you see that all the time or you see them in a big movie screen and then you get to see them in person, no matter how we like to look at that, like why does somebody get off because from a traffic ticket because they're a celebrity, as many unfair things happen, that's just the way our human nature has been. We celebrate those kind of people, and that's why show business is able to subsist and perpetuate itself over and over again because we always love it. Sure, the people right. fall out of favor soon, but there's always somebody new to be in the highlight and to find out, okay, what are they doing and what happened to them and why. And, you know, that's one of that's one of the allures of show business. Right. I agree with that 100%. I just wish that some of the focus would be on talents and not just having money like the Kardashians or, you know, right. things like that, that, that they focus on so much. I mean, with the medium being the way that it is now and having all the exposure that you can have, we could be doing so much more than just having these reality shows. I mean, I love some of the reality shows, don't get me wrong, but there could be so much more entertainment on other than just reality. I think that um, a lot could be done, and I would like to help out if I could. So well, I maybe totally I join agree forces with you. With you. I totally agree with what you're saying. Good. I'm glad you know, to hear but, that. You know, then once again, Jay, we look at our society, and our society – they are more interested in that. It's like the funniest thing I read on Facebook is like Thanksgiving, we all spend the time leading up to this day to say how thankful we are for everything we have. Then we spend the next day trampling each other in a store to get that sweater on this <laughs> you know, and, and it's, so, it's so funny. Yeah. You are hilarious. That is so true. So and I true. saw that on Facebook. I thought, oh, my God, that is so true how the American public is. It's like, you know, we bless this food, all got our hands. Papa made the biscuits. You brought the chicken. They had the turkey. We are full. We have played in the yard. We have had our dessert. Everything is fabulous. And now run to the store and get that thing. And run to the yeah. person, get it and hold the door open and get in the car and leave the motor running. Let's go. Let's go. Move it, people. Move it. Move it. Move it. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Yeah, it's what like, happened yeah, to being just thankful for the right. love and your family and your friends? Now you need to go out and get the stuff, you know. I mean, things uh-huh. that you really don't need in life if you sit down and really think about it. That is not the most important thing to have the new Nintendo or whatever is out these days. So, right. like, <laughs> it's so it's funny, I know. So funny. It is just so funny what, like, you know, our priorities are and, and mm-hmm. the way life has changed. Because, you know, there are people like, you you meet that are not online, they're not part of social media, and they live their lives fine, too, so it can be done. But, of course, in the work that I'm in, I just couldn't fathom that. I mean, I just could not fathom, like, I'm about to do a movie now, and if I wasn't online, not to be able to get the scripts sent to me and everything, and and just like all our follow-up for this radio interview. Can you imagine Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you know, Ralph doesn't um, have an email. You're going to have to mail that to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
How did we ever survive before? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, I and speaking of your projects that you have coming up, I know there's a musical, How Sweet It Is, and you're in it, Erica Christensen, Burt Reynolds, Joe Piscopo, Eddie Griffin, and so many more. That sounds like the funniest musical, and I pray to God that you bring that to Chicago. I have oh, to Oh, I hope you get – well, God, wait. Oh, no, they were in Florida. No, I am hoping the same thing, Pam, because – I don't know if they've gotten a distributor yet, but we're actually having a screening of it here in Los Angeles on December 3rd at Warner Brothers. And I'm very excited to see it because it was so much fun to make. And the funny thing is, when I auditioned for it, I didn't even know it was a musical. I didn't know it was a musical until I was in the movie. And they, because I didn't have to sing or, any, or dance at the audition. But it, what a bonus it became because I come from musical comedy. Hello! I know, it's perfect. <laughs> I had so much fun in this movie, getting to do this stuff, like this big dance number, and, oh, we all got along really great, so it's going to be a lot of fun. How sweet it is. Yes, and I got to play with all the, well, I didn't meet Burt Reynolds, but I got to play with all these veteran actors, so how fun is that? Oh, my gosh, yeah, you couldn't ask for any better. Um, You play Indigo, and what is your part? My part, there are three transvestites who are trying to get, they are trying to find the doctor that gave them bad drugs for their hormones. And this bad, they discover this bad doctor in front of this mafia boss played by Paul Servino. And oh, we, my God. And in the okay. midst of tracking him down, they also enlist us to become a part of this mafia musical. <laughs> I love and, uh, that. I love that. And, thereby, and that's my part in How Sweet It Is, and it's hilarious. <laughs> so we have so much fun in this movie. So yeah. <laughs> um, Brian Herzlinger directed, and he was just crazy and fun. So I am very happy to be a part of it. Erica Christensen, she's so lovely to work with. Joe Piscopo, hilarious. So it was a lot of fun. Michael Pere was really great. So, Victoria, I mean, I can't keep talking because it's like there's so many people. But yeah. it was a really, I mean, it was a really fun project to be on. So it'll be fun next week to go and see it and to see everybody again. Oh, well, I think it. you need to send a plane for me and pick up Jay on the way, and, and we'll, we'll go with you because oh, I have to be there. Oh, great. Yeah, it'll be great <laughs> when they – the movie is – like, I've only seen the trailer. So I my first time I'll be seeing it next week, too, but – I hope it'll get distributorship so everybody can see it because it's hilarious. And why not? Hilarious. Musical? <laughs> of course. They've done everything musical-wise, it seems like, so that would be the, per- the next, the next exactly. thing that would work. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, how many mafia musicals can you think of off the top of your head? Uh, and, none. None. Yeah. So <laughs> now we have this one. We have these great people in the film. They're all these crazy characters. It's a really colorful film. And, uh, yeah, so it's going to be fun to like to, to ride the popularity of this film. Well, for our listeners, I'm just going to read the little bit that's here on IMDb to give you an idea. An alcoholic theater owner needs to put together a successful musical in order to pay off his mob debt. But problems arise when the wise guys want to cast their friends in the production. So I guess you're those friends. Exactly. <laughs> those would be, I would be one of those friends. So I love my placement in these films, you guys. It's because I get to always do something fun. And, you know, whether I'm in a prison movie, which is K-11, or doing How Sweet It Is, which is a mafia musical, or All About Christmas Eve, where I'm in drag in that movie, playing best friends to Haley Duff, I always get a fun, colorful role, and I love being a character actor in Hollywood. Is the um, all about Christmas Eve? I was reading about that too. Patrick Muldoon, Haley Duff, Connie Selica, Diana DeGarmo, Ace Young, and so many more. It's a romantic movie where you play a drag queen. And I have to say that I saw you as a transsexual on Cold Case, and you make oh. a very pretty woman. <laughs> oh, Pam, thank you. <laughs> How long I does it take you to get too. made up? So <laughs> when I do it for TV shows, they do it for me. So I'm mm-hmm. in, in hair and makeup for less than an hour. When I audition, it takes me about 45 minutes to get myself done up the way I want to present myself and then to get to the audition. 
So, yeah, it, does, it usually doesn't take a whole lot of time. But okay. I, it's That's always good. the best time because hair and makeup is the most fun place to be on a TV or movie set for me. Mm-hmm. Well, in the now, work that you've done in television and also um, film and on stage, I'm not going to ask you for your number one, but could you give me the top three um, favorite co-stars that you've worked with for whatever reason, being funny or being sweet or um, three or five, if you could. I, I would just love to hear some of your favorite co-stars. To work okay, with. well, Marsha Croft from Desperate Housewives mm-hmm. is absolutely lovely to work with. What, one of the fun things about Desperate Housewives <clears throat> was that I got, it, it was a show that I watched already, and I was in the third season, so I was w- well ensconced into the show. Mm-hmm. Loved just love the storyline. So when I found out my scene was with Marsha and we met and everything was so – the thing that's so great for me, you guys, I'm such – I'm still starstruck, excuse me, <clears throat> when I meet celebrities that I've always loved. So when I got to meet Marsha, it was so lovely because being this close away from her face, saying these lines with her was like, oh, my goodness, I've been watching you for three years on my television every Sunday night at 9 o'clock and love you, and mm-hmm. now I'm getting to work opposite you. And she was just so nice. She was pregnant at the time, and in between our takes, she would sit in front of a heater because we were shooting at night um, in one of the, her director chair, and we just had a lovely conversation. Mark Cherry, the director and creator of Desperate uh-huh. Housewives, was also there. Uh, Wendy Stanzler directed the episode. So it was just a great camaraderie with everybody involved. I um, missed that show. Episodes, that was a great show. Oh, I loved it. Thank you, Pam. Mm-hmm. On two and a half, well, I'm thanking you for being a great show, as though I created it and directed it. But I, yeah. will, thank you my, I will thank you for the one episode that I was on. Okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And on behalf of the cast and crew of Desperate Housewives, <laughs> season three, episode three, we thank you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. You have entertained us for many years and just oh, not on Desperate Housewives. And then when I did Two and a Half Men, again, a show that I always watched. Mm-hmm. So, But never thought I would be on it because they were always casting beautiful women. So, lo and behold, I end up getting to play Charlie Sheen's hairdresser. And I am actually doing Angus's hair on the show. Charlie Sheen and I got along great. We had great conversations in between our scenes, and it was just nice to. And all because when we shot that episode, it was their last episode of the season, mm-hmm. and it was nice to be able to in the downtime to just be in a little area like where it wasn't really busy and stand and talk to somebody like Charlie Sheen. And that just and that's what makes it so great about show business. I've worked with so many great people, and yes, I'm starstruck, but yes, at the same time, we're all people, too. So right. it was just really fun. But because, once again, like I said earlier, because we, for whatever reason, we highlight these people and we celebrate them and we talk about them all the time, when you're actually getting to be with them now, it is something special. And it is something different. That's just the way our society and, and, and it is. It's something that we really can't apologize for because it is a human condition, and we like that. And and that's why we all stand behind a barricade watching a parade because anybody walking coming down that asphalt in the parade is somebody that is being cheered or idolized right. or watched. That's just the human nature of things. So it's fun to always celebrate that. So getting to um, speak with that particular icon once again it was just very fun for me. Um, I did a show called Dexter, and I worked with Jennifer, and who plays uh, one of the detectives on the show. And once again, I had a lovely time with her in the alley where we shot this in Long Beach, chatting in between them calling action and cut. And once again, you guys, if all these people are do these TV shows every week, right? And right. they you, they deal with a lot of different people, but everybody has always made me feel so welcome and so wonderful and so part of everything for the time that I am there. And mm-hmm. Jennifer Carpenter was no differently. I didn't work with Michael in that one, but um, Jennifer was no differently than that. And 
I just like to give credit to that because it's not apparently always that way from stories I've heard, but I have been very fortunate to just 